So, hi everyone, this is Cedric from Belgium. And uh, the topic of my today's presentation is enhancing quality risk classification with natural language processing. And it is a group effort from myself, Jake, Himanshu, Talia, Hali, and uh, Andrew. So my today's presentation is going to be divided into five different parts. First of all, I will give a quick introduction of our project and the context. And then I will give a brief overview of the natural language processing. And then I'm going to talk about the modeling strategy and the performance of our model. Also, I'm going to mention something related to our operational plan and some key takeaways at the very last. So first of all, the data we are handling is about the product quality. And as you know, the quality is a very important factor for any bi biotech or pharmaceutical company. And the accurate risk classification for the quality risk can help us to ensure uh, the high co product quality. However, we have observed that uh, some selection of the risk level uh, is kind of noisy for the quality issue. Some issue could should be classified as a critical, but in the data, database, someone just classified it as a minor, and it co could also be the other way around. And the, the consequence of that is, is going to negatively impact the downstream risk-based approach. For example, we have the corrective action and the preventive action that needs to be taken to mitigate the issue. And for the critical issue, we need to re react much more quicker than the uh, minor issue. If we couldn't uh, give it an accurate risk classification, it's going to impact the downstream process. So in this work, we propose another data-driven framework, which can classify the risk level based on the description of the issue, which is a free text data. We combine some like cutting edge deep neural networks and also some ensemble mod modeling concept. I'm going to talk more details later. And also we demonstrate this application uh, on our internal data. We have the Belgian quality data from 2016 to 2022. We use that data as our validation set to evaluate the performance. And also in order to integrate this tool into the business process, we design some uh, kind of the routine process to operate, operationalize the tool. Okay, so uh, what, so first of all, what is NLP? So NLP is basically, it's kind of an interdisciplinary field between the computer science and the linguistics. So the goal of that is to allow the computers with some kind of the capability to perform the task that can uh, involve with some natural language, like the human language. Some application you may have heard is like the sentiment analysis, text summarization, and the text classification. And why it is imperative for our use case to use NLP, which is because in our case, we are handling quality issue data, which is in the free text format. Traditional machine learning approach, most of them, they are expecting some numeric data. So they are not able to effectively handle this type of the data. That's the reason uh, we, we want to use NLP to extract some meaningful insights from the uh, text data in our quality database. As for how the NLP works in, in our case, so basically to handle the quality issue data, we leverage a bunch of the transformer-based deep neural network models. And uh, those models, they have been trained using some transfer learning in our, with our in-house data to accurately infer the risk level based on the content and the sentiment underneath of those uh, issue description. So here is a very high level, like general workflow of our process. So basically, uh, we got a quality issue data from our internal database, and then we fed it into some pre-trained neural network models. Because we don't have like a huge amount of the data, we cannot train those models from scratch. What we have done is something called the transfer learning. We basically just uh, retrain the neural network layers and do some fine tuning of the neural network weights with our in-house quality data to make it more adaptive uh, to our uh, internal type of the data. After we do the transfer learning and did a bunch of the modeling, uh, we, we, do, we finish the model evaluation, and then we host the best model as the inference API uh, on, the, on our internal server. And then we also created and deploy a Streamlit dashboard with a pose that connect to make it more user-friendly so the end user can use our, uh, our model with a very convenient way. So now I'm going to talk a little bit more details about what is our modeling strategy. Basically, we took a two steps modeling strategy. First off, first step is about some deep learning process. Uh, our input data, which is a quality issue, which is a free text data. And then we formulate the problem into a bi bi binary classification problem. Class zero means the issue is a minor, is, is a major or critical issue. 
class one means it's a manual or recommendation level issue. And then we we tested a bunch of the deep learning models like the Robota part and the Longformer and the others. And we did some transfer learning uh, on top of that with our internal data. And after we do finish all the transfer learning process for the each given quality issue text uh, and each given uh, fine tuning the model, it's gonna generate a pair of the probability, uh, which is the probability being classified as a major or the probability being classified as a minor. And then we got a bunch of the output of, from each of the deep, deep learning model. And then we go to the step two. Step two, with, uh, with, which is an example learning with a traditional machine learning model like the XGBoost and Random Forest and the LightGBM. So what we have tested different example methods like the bagging, stacking, and boosting and to get a result. So the, the result would, like, would be like the screenshot I put in the bottom right corner. For example, the record could be the database log was delayed by two days, and the model predicted has a minor or recommendation level issue, and gave a confidence score is ninety nine percent. And the S, the second example would be the SAF was not signed by the patient. We predict it has a critical major, and the confidence score for that classification is around ninety eight percent. So. Like the first part for the in the step one, we apply some like deep learning models because we don't have like enough sample size, as I mentioned before. So we apply some transfer learning to retrain and fine tune multiple deep learning models. Uh, for the sake of the time, I won't go into the details of each of them. And uh, in the step two, we did some example learning with the machine learning model. So you may have a question like why, why we want to do this? That is because like uh, for a given record. Each fine tuning deep learning model, they predict the probability for class one or class zero, respectively. But all of those models, they are not always in agreement. Maybe the BART think is a, a critical model, but the Robota, the Robota model think is a, just like a minor issue. So we want to utilize the example learning approach to harmonize the output from different uh, deep learning model and improve the robustness of the model. So we use the bagging, boosting, and stacking, and I won't go into the details of each of them. In terms of the model evaluation, because our data set is highly imbalanced, like 90% of the issues, they are just a minor risk. Only 10% of the issues, they raise some major or critical risk. So the accuracy is not a good metric to measure the performance. So we have uh, introduced the TNR, TPR, and also given our domain, domain knowledge, we created a customized metric, which is a weighted average of the TNR and the TPR, gave a little bit more weight for the TNR because of the nature of our domain. As you can see here, here is a performance summary table. Uh, the best model we get is the ensemble model with a bagging approach, uh, which we got the custom metric is, is around the 78%. So, Another thing I'm gonna talk about is about the model operational plan because we have the model developed and we got the best model evaluated. We need to integrate it into the business process. In order to do that, we need to establish some operational plan. So basically the, the way we have uh, planned is like every quarter end, we pull all the new quality issue uh, in this quarter from the, our quality database. And then we send those quality issue into our best inference API endpoint and make the inference on their risk level. And then we have created a streamlit user interface, which is hosted on the POSET Connect. And the user can go there and say the flag out the records with inconsistent risk level assignment between human entry and the model inference on this streamlit UI. And then we are gonna report some records with potential incorrect risk level to our data quality review meeting. And the SME will uh, manually review about records and take some actions such as correct the risk level of some existing records or do some training for the for the for the colleague who are entering the risk level for those issues if that is needed. And also we have established some model refresh plan as well. So basically every every quarter we get a feedback from the SME, we are gonna do some model calibration and uh, every semi semi-yearly we are gonna do some model refresh without changing the fundamental model. And every year we are gonna revisit the modeling strategy and refresh the entire modeling pipeline. So here is one, one of the example I, I, I would like to quickly show, which is our user interface we have designed. As you can see, we have one column which is track rights risk level, which is by the human entry. And also we have another column, which is the predicted risk level, which is the inference from the model. You can say sometimes they are not aligning with- Mr. 
the, you know, Cedric, we are out of time. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.